It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. For today's video, I'll be responding to yet another clip that was done by Vosh. My previous video was just talking about his top five failures that he did on live streams. And so for this video, I'll be responding to his whole entire clip that was just talking about why he does not understand why people don't want to identify as anti-fascist or anti-racist. And so without further hesitation, let's begin the clip. You can ask a Republican, are you, do you like racism? And they'll say no, unless they're like very, 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 very far right. But then you can say, so we should be anti-racist. And they'll freak out. You all have noticed this, right? Republicans, Charlie Kirk, Ben Shapiro, whatever, they'll all say when they get the chance racism is bad. But for some reason, they're opposed to anti-racism, like as a concept, which if you, so you're against it, but you're also against being against it is, you know, yeah, they'll say it's like a reverse racism thing. But the fact that they bristle so openly at the term is insane. Same with fascism and anti-fascism. Hey, you think fascism's bad? Cool. I'm anti-fascist. And then they get really mad. Like, well, what, then what do you actually believe then? Come on. First and foremost, I first want to state that my definition of anti-racism comes directly from How to Be Anti-Racist that was written by Kendi a while back. Now the main reason why I'm using this book as a reference is because it's basically the bestseller of anti-racism and is currently being used across different fields of training for the anti-racism training for like many corporations and school systems. And so without further hesitation, I'm gonna show you guys the parts I actually agree with as well as the parts that I disagree with. The first idea I agree with with Kendi is the idea that black people can be racist. Quote, the saying black people cannot be racist reproduce the false duality of racist and non-racist produced by white racists to define their racism. It merges black people with white Trump voters who are angry about being called racist but who want to express racist views and support their racist policies while being identified as not racist no matter what they say or do. By this theory, Black people can call them niggers, value light people over dark people, support anti-Latinx immigration policy, defend the anti-native team Manscas, back bans against Middle Eastern Muslims, and still escape charges of racism. By this theory, Latinx, Asians, and natives can fear unknown black bodies, support mass incarceration policies, and still escape charges of racism. By this theory, I could look upon white people as devils and aliens and still escape charges of racism. I actually agree with Kenny at this point because I've seen video clips of many black people who are just, you know, attacking like the Asian people on the streets, specifically in California. And I saw one clip where basically a guy states that he cannot be racist because he is black. So when you say that black people cannot be racist, is justification to hate other people solely on the base of the race. Anybody could be racist. And so for this case, I say yes. Kennedy is actually right on his estimate right here. I also agree with the idea of bodily racism. Bodily racism as defined by Kennedy is somebody who is perceiving certain racialized bodies as more animal-like and violent than others. And he also states that bodily anti-racism is somebody who is humanizing, deracializing, and individualizing nonviolent and violent behavior. The main reason why I agree with this idea is because black people, for the longest period of time, have been portrayed as chimpanzees or great apes throughout many comic books or drawings and artwork. And so they actually do in fact dehumanize black people to animal status by having those kind of images right there. And so I actually agree with this idea of bodily racism. Now these are the ideas that really get me lost. He defines racist as somebody who is supporting a racist policy through their actions or inaction 
or expressing a racist idea. And he also defines anti-racist as somebody who's supporting an anti-racist policy through their actions or expressing an anti-racist idea. Now this part gets really juicy. Really juicy super fast. What is the problem of not being racist? It is a claim that signifies neutrality. I am not a racist, but neither am I aggressively against racism. But there is no neutrality in a racism struggle. The opposite of racist is not racist. It is anti-racist. What's the difference? One either believes in the idea of a racial hierarchy as a racist or racial equality as an anti-racist. One either believes problems are rooted in groups of people as racist or localized to roots of problems and powers and policy as anti-racist. One either allows racial inequality to perceive as racist or confunds racial inequities as an anti-racist. There is no in-between space of not racist. The claim of not racist neutrality is a mark for racist. Not only this presents a false dichotomy, when it comes down to not wanting to be an activist, but also Kenny is stating right here that if you don't want to be an activist for anti-racism, you are as racist as a racist. That does not make any sort of sense because I'm sure that most people are against racism, right? But this idea that you either have to be some sort of activist or you're a racist, that to me does not sound fair in the slightest. And matter of fact, this whole entire thing, like I said earlier, is some sort of false dichotomy to push people into ideological positions. The common idea of claiming colorblindness is akin to the notion of being not racist. As with not racist, the colorblind individual, by intensely failing to see race, fails to see racism, and falls into racist passivities. The language of colorblindness, like with the language of not racist, is a mass to high racism. That's right, folks. People like Martin Luther King, who promote the idea of colorblindness, the idea of judging people solely on their character and not by their physical characteristics, and of itself is a racist idea. So yes, Martin Luther King, according to Kennedy, is actually, you know, having some sort of racist attitude against other people. That's very nice to know. Now this part really, really got to me when I read this for the first time. It outright states that the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-racist discrimination. The only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy to present discrimination is future discrimination. This type of language right here could just lead to race wars. It's pretty much stating that because white people have done bad things in the past, it's justification to discriminate future generations of white people because of their race. Fighting fire with fire does not end well. It'll be a bad thing to actually apply this idea because I heard directly that Kennedy wants his own personal department of anti-racism and so if we were to apply this sort of notion this idea that any sort of past action justify future discrimination it will probably raise racial tensions like that now during the last part of the video Vosh basically stated the fact that they bristle so openly at the term is insane same with fascism and anti-fascism hey you think fascism's bad cool I'm anti-fascist. And then they get really mad. Like, well, what, then what do you actually believe then? Well, Vosh, I need to remind you why anti-fascist has a really bad annotation. So there you go, Vosh. People don't want to be called anti-fascist because the association of the terrorist group. And people don't want to be called anti-racist because of the definition as defined by Kendi and these other kind of anti-racist activists. So what do you guys think? Was I fair in my assessment? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend.
Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler